Hello, I am Shandor Barta. I've been working on the topic I am going to present with James Cheney and Vaishak Bell at the University of Edinburgh. The broad topic of the present talk is reconstructing the semantics of a programming language based on an opaque or non-intelligible implementation. At the first glance, we have a black box interpreter. We can test it with small test programs, we can observe its behavior, the output of these programs, and our goal is to produce an operational semantics, that is, a definition or interpreter for the language, whose behavior is the same and can be tested to be the same as that of the black box interpreter. The task represented by the double red arrow is currently done by human semantic engineers. But this task is tedious. Accordingly, there are only a handful of programming languages with formal tested semantics, like JavaScript or Python cited here. These semantics are the products of months of work by research groups. The next logical step is to achieve semi-automation or machine assistance for this task. This is the challenge Krishnamurti and his colleagues have put forward for the research community in their paper referenced in the slide. The aforementioned papers on JavaScript and Python exemplify a common trend in tested semantics, decomposing the semantics into two parts, a core language and shallow translations that desugar the full source language into this reduced core version. Krishnamurti and his colleagues have an insightful idea, dividing the semantics between human and machine this way, as illustrated here. Starting from observing the black box interpreter, let the human semantic engineer write the greatly reduced core version of the language, together with an operational semantics for this reduced language, which is hopefully much easier to write. And let us find the shallow translation between the fully fetched source language and this core language automatically, based on the testing criterion that the two interpreters must match each, other, each other's behavior through the translation. Our aim is a synthesis algorithm that reconstructs this shallow translation from the behavior of the two interpreters. To further clarify the challenge, we highlight that it is the semantics of the source language, as opposed to its syntax, that we aim to reconstruct. We assume that interpreters and operational semantics deal with abstract syntax trees, rather than a string representation of programs. Our goal is to find a compositional translation from the source trees to the core trees. We are looking for individual translation rules for program constructs on the abstract source language. Let's see a concrete example of what we would like to achieve. To illustrate the expected behavior of the envisioned synthesis algorithm, we quote a pair of simplified languages from the work of Krishnamurti and his colleagues which we dubbed pigeon source and pigeon core languages. The input of the synthesis algorithm consists of test programs written in the source language and their observed outputs produced by the opaque source interpreter. Two test programs are shown here as examples, but we can evaluate many more test programs, covering the behavior of various language constructs. The expected output of this synthesis algorithm is, set, is uh, the set of desugaring rules covering every language construct of the source language. Some rules are relabelings. Simple constructs tend to be included in both the source and the core version. Some are simple mappings between slightly different representations. The two pigeon examples are translating between different representations of booleans and between different representations of primitive operations and some translation rules are more complex. One pigeon example is expressing the as-between source language construct by primitive operations in the core language, where we also need to control the evaluation order of the arguments. As I have mentioned, the pigeon languages are simplified illustrative examples. Since our aim is to reduce the size of the source language, in practice we expect a source language that is much larger than the core language and accordingly, we expect far more rules than shown here. 
Krishnamurti and his colleagues also suggested an initial search space for these compositional translations, three transducers. They highlighted with the pidgin languages, however, that the three transducer model is too limited. For example, it cannot express fresh name generation or rearranging of children. And now to the challenges. There are reasons why the task is called a challenge. Program synthesis as such is challenging. Here we would like to scale program synthesis with the number of program constructs of the source language. The larger the language, the more rules we need to synthesize. Scaling in this dimension is crucial, since the whole point of the translation is the reduction of the source language. But scaling program synthesis is hard. The testing framework is quite unusual. It is somewhat similar to the inductive synthesis problem. Inductive synthesis aims to synthesize a function based on input-output pairs. In our case, however, we cannot generate direct input-output examples for the program that we aim to synthesize. We cannot run tests on the translation itself, just indirect tests on the interpreters. We are not aware of methods that target translations between two testable implementations. Moreover, we expect engineers to write a different core language every time, so we need to abstract over the core language. Since the translation rules are expressed by the core language, this makes the target domain of the synthesis open and makes domain-specific optimizations difficult. Most successful program synthesis methods target a much narrower domain, like string or bit vector operations. And as Krishnamurti and his colleagues highlighted, we need to enrich core language expressions with extra capabilities, like name generation or rearranging of children. We would like to emphasize at this point that this is an open-ended problem. Our contribution aimed at carving out a path of research in this open-ended field that can then be systematically explored. We worked under the assumption that looking for an optimized algorithm is premature due to the open-ended nature of the problem. It might rather be better to start with a brute force method and look for a task that can be solved by it. To make this assumption work, we have two ideas. First, learn incrementally. And second, find a hypothesis space between the limited three transducers and the challenging to synthesize during complete language. Programming languages are not taught to human students at once. Rather, we introduce features in small groups. Semantic engineers do not write the whole semantics at once either, but gradually extend it with new features. We hypothesize that the automatic learning of translation rules can be done in a similar way, in small groups, starting with the most basic language constructs and progressively introducing more advanced features. Our first contribution is to have delineated a solvable problem in the open problem domain. We formally defined the desugaring extension problem, which assumes that part of the translation is already known, and we intend to learn the translation rules for only a small number of program constructs. Let's see an example for a desugaring extension problem. The step in which we learn the translation rule for the S between construct. The translation of literals, primitive operations, and assignment is already fixed. This example shows the most common case, where only one translation rule is synthesized. In our case studies, we had a few two-element groups and one three-element group. We gradually extend the translation to the full source language by chaining together desugaring extension problems. We hypothesized that we can partition the learning task into individual desugaring extension problems that are small enough to be solved, and this way, we can obtain the full translation of the source language. We aim for a model of compositional translations between the two restrictive three transducers and the hard to synthesize during complete language. We narrow down the problem space by specifying an extensible hypothesis space using a formalism based on sequent calculus. 
We started from basic rules that correspond to deterministic tree transducers and showed how the system can be extended with additional meta rules. For example, extending the basic rules with the fresh rule shown here extends the capability of the tree transducers to use freshly generated names. We identified two general patterns that are often needed in translation rules, name generation and case separation. Some desugarings we studied fall outside of these extensions. In these cases, extra user guidance was needed to write the meta rules. We also investigated user guidance in the form of limiting the set of meta rules or restricting their order. We have demonstrated that we can express challenging translation rules of the pidgin languages. Here the first two examples demonstrate natural meta language extensions fresh name generation, case separation, and compile time exceptions. The third example rearranges the children. In this case, the unzip function, function must be provided by the user. The other extensions are general, but unzip is specialized to a list of pairs, and different rearrangements require different functions. We have also demonstrated that these translation rules can still be relatively efficiently enumerated. We implemented a synthesis library based on the feed Haskell library. The feed library provides efficient enumeration of algebraic data types. We built on this capability to enumerate quite arbitrary, inductively defined terms based on the context of the terms. We set up three case studies. In the first, we used the aforementioned pidgin languages in our second case study, we learned the desugarings of simplified list comprehensions into basic monadic operations. And finally, we studied one complex desugaring rule, a try-catch finally construct translated into a simpler try-catch construct. We found that most of the time we can learn the translation rules one by one, as the new constructors column shows. We rarely needed to learn two and, in one case, three language constructs at once. We demonstrated that it is possible to chain together individual tissue getting extension problems to obtain the full semantics of our source languages. For each tissue getting extension problem, we only needed to write a few test programs, as shown here in the test set column. One challenge that was still present too was scaling. Even for the simplified language constructs, for larger translation rules, we needed additional user guidance. In the table shown, we only needed additional user guidance for the largest rule, the as between rule, in which we used the restricted hypothesis space. This is expected for a brute force method, and we could easily incorporate the necessary user guidance into the search. But the user guidance needed indicates the limitations of our results and opens up new challenges to be solved. To summarize, we've been working on the challenge to provide machine assistance in semantic engineering. The first step we took introduced incremental learning and an extensible hypothesis space. We believe that these steps have made way for a systematic continuation. The field is open. As the question, how much of semantic engineering is possible to automate is still to be investigated by further research. Thank you for your attention.